Uh, welcome, everybody. And, and as Eric introduced, we're going to be talking about NDI and the tri cash Align. I'll give you guys a presentation shortly. Uh, briefly, just want to introduce myself. I've been working with new tech equipment for something north of 10 years. So uh, uh, to say I've been in and around and involved with this stuff is, is an understatement. Uh, and I really, really like to work on really cool projects. Uh, that's one of the benefits I have of working in new tech. And NDI certainly embodies that idea of something that's cool and really sort of enables you to do so many more things. And so uh, here's my presentation. We'll go. Okay, so here we are talking about uh, uh, NDI 5 and the new tech TriCaster. Most of this is gonna center around NDI 5 because that is the latest and greatest brand new release. And then I'm gonna talk to you guys a little bit about what makes this really slick with the TriCaster. And I think one of the things we really consider is with NDI 5, the, the whole world is your studio. Uh, and we're gonna explain what that means, but starting to open up the ability to do these things over the wide area network. So, excuse me. So uh, NDI is really a revolution in uh, video storytelling. Uh, this is the fifth generation of NDI and it represents sort of a quantum leap in what we can do uh, with production in video IP. Uh, NDI allows you to move video between video and audio really anywhere around the world. Uh, and it's still easy to use and backwards compatible previous versions of NDI. So if you've been working with new tech in the past, you're gonna find that uh, all the stuff you like is still here. We're gonna talk about a couple key features today. We're gonna talk about how NDI 5 does new efficiencies in IP. We're gonna talk about NDI Bridge, which is sort of one of these marquee new feature sets that I think everyone's gonna be really uh, interested in. We're gonna talk about NDI Remote and uh, NDI Audio Direct. And these are all feature sets available to download today in the NDI Toolkit. First things first, we're going to talk about efficiency in NDI. Um, it, you know, New Tech's been doing this for quite a little bit. The release of NDI 1 was uh, a little over six years ago. Um, and uh, getting video and audio and metadata over IP uh, tends to be difficult and, can, and require a lot of setup. But with NDI 5, we have sort of made another generational leap in how we uh, process this stuff. So now we have a reliable UDP, which is a high performance transmission protocol. And our UDP is really leading the way in a lot of these new NDI feature sets. And beautifully enough, a lot of the contemporary new tech TriCasters uh, support our UDP with the release of NDI 5. So you're gonna find that there's a, a lot of synergy within NDI 5 and the products we make. Um, there's also a whole new list of things happening in discovery, uh, uh, network, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, choosing particular NIC selections and uh, privacy as well. So we're addressing a lot of concerns that I think people have had in the past so, you know, as we talk about NDI 5, these are the really, really nitty gritty stuff that's happening underneath the hood, but there's so many things that get involved in NDI 5 besides the marquee feature sets. It's also IP transmission and what we can really do with those so sources. Let's talk about NDI Bridge. So NDI Bridge allows you to securely share NDI sources between local and remote sites anywhere around the world. If you've used NDI in the past, typically we talk about NDI in the local area network, this is that next step forward, really allowing you to bring in sources from anywhere. And that is the sort of the, been the grand future for NDI is I want to be able to set up sources anywhere and use them anywhere in my NDI production. Um, this can include all kinds of benefits for NDI, things like uh, NDI KVM, PTZ control, tally metadata. There's so much already built into the protocol. And now with the benefit of Bridge, we can all bring that into the remote world. Uh, I want to give a couple of simple examples of uh, NDI Bridge. So we'll discuss a local NDI Bridge. So here we have a couple sources uh, on our network of different varieties. They can be things like uh, an old school NDI HX PTZ camera. They can be the brand new NC2 IO. Um, and, and we have these sources just on our local network. With the base version of NDI Bridge local, uh, I can convert these sources into NDI HX. And this is the new version of NDIHX, which really gives me a super tangible benefit insofar as I can maximize the amount of bandwidth I'm using and, and make the most of what I have available. Our high efficiency protocol uses about a 10th of the overall NDI bandwidth. So if you have a relatively restricted NDI network in place or a production network or using the existing network in your facility, well, using something like Bridge today 
can help minimize the amount of IP resources you're using and still deliver that high performance of NDI that we're looking for. So this is a cool, straightforward feature. You can do this today. Also, a little note I should talk here is that we often talk about the latest and greatest with our products. NDI Bridge allows you to interface existing NDI uh, equipment, especially HX equipment, with older TriCasters. So if you're an old school TriCaster user that has some NDI enablement, and maybe you've been looking at some of the new uh, NDI releases, whether it's from new tech from other companies, using you can use Bridge today to interface those products into your older TriCaster. So immediate value today. And again, this is a free download. Now we start to talk about the more complex things that we're doing with Bridge. And this is, I think, one of the coolest feature sets that we can talk about, which is using Bridge in Bridge mode and going through that remote, uh, uh, sort of using the, the wide area network. So I can have effectively two studios, a studio on the left with some NDI sources, and I'll join a bridge. And on the right, I can host the bridge, maybe in my home facility. And now, even though these two facilities aren't on the local area network, all of my NDI sources are shared. This is all based upon that RUDP protocol, and it is really slick in integration. You'll just see remote NDI sources. And, and this is for any NDI in, environment. It doesn't have to be strictly a new tech environment. Again, you just have to download the software for Bridge. Now we start to take this to the final level of, you know, where do we want our productions to head to? And this is total interconnectivity between multiple remote sites. If you're a corporate entity and you want to sort of maximize the fact that you have major uh, a couple of major uh, headquarters centers and these sort of spokes as we're going to go through, and we want to say, hey, we want to do a town hall production. We want to take it to that next level. Well, something like NDI Bridge will allow you to have one central location generating and receiving a bunch of NDI signals, but also allow you to do localized productions across the internet. So this is all happening over the WAN, uh, and it is just going to be really, really easy to maximize the capabilities for NDI Bridge. And so uh, I, I think there's a lot of productions today that can start to benefit from NDI Bridge. And I think it's going to be a really cool feature as people start to implement it. It's one of the ones I'm the most excited about because even in New Jersey, I have my apartment and I have my studio right now in my studio. I can easily seamlessly share NDI sources from my apartment, maybe things like a PTZ camera or a Spark, and integrate them with my studio, which is you know maybe a couple of miles away. I could just as easily do that with a facility in California, in Canada, you know, or effectively around the world. So that's Bridge in a nutshell and some of the highlights. I want to get onto NDI Remote. NDI Re Remote allows you to bring in live sources at last minute, simply using a mobile device as a camera. This is sort of the, the holy grail of live interactive uh, uh, sort of media when we're talking about sports or news or things like that. And you want to get that latest scoop. Well, NDI Remote makes this very simple. Um, we can connect any remote user or local user and receive their audio video over your Wi-Fi, public internet. It, it's really easy to use. And so we have two examples here. We have remote where someone is uh, generating the link. You can email that link out. And then on the far end, the end user opens their phone or opens their computer. And now you're receiving the, the audio and video from that device into your ecosystem. It's now an NDI source for you to leverage. Uh, also, we can generate a, uh, a user can hit the remote.ndi TV webpage and enable their transmission, select their channels. And we have another pathway to then convert that NDI signal into something that we can use in our production facility. The goal here is ease of use, it's hyper flexible, really easy to deploy. Again, just super slick. And as we talk about the nature of things going forward, you guys are mentioning earlier that we, there might be another live event going forward. Well, hey, you want to get some remote contribution? And your iRemote is a real simple solution for this stuff. Here's a couple of key features that users can send uh, invitations. It's a, you can scan a QR code. Again, we're trying to make this as user-friendly as possible. And, and NDI Remote is a really simple solution. It is that ease of use tool for those users who aren't super technically savvy. Let's talk about NDI Auto Direct. So now we have the ability with NDI Auto Direct to harness the incredible power of really sophisticated audio systems. Um, this allows us to encode explicitly an NDI audio feed and interface it with something like the power of an Ardor based platform. Um, these, this is a brand new sort of feature set that really expands your high end audio workflows. Um, and it's just converting NDI and using that audio, that audio layer that we always do in NDI and allow you to work in a more flexible audio over IP platform. And so here we have an example of a source generating into 
NDI and we're bringing it into sort of a digital workstation that is managing all these different signal workflows. And now we have a much more sophisticated potential for NDI audio. I think if you've worked with any other audio over IP standard before, you're gonna to start to realize the benefits of NDI Audio Direct. And the fact that it is NDI means that it can be very flexible with a wide variety of platforms. So that was the, that's the, the, the ultra condensed version of what's happening in NDI 5. I wanna talk about how this now translates into the, the TriCaster pipeline. And I really wanna focus on the TriCaster 2 and a feature that we have called Live Call Connect. I'm gonna tie this all together with this nice simple graphic at the end. But as we're talking about these productions, we have a lot of things that are very basic. We have a lot of Zoom meetings, Teams meetings. This has been the last year plus of our lives as we're doing this content. And we really wanna make this more engaging. And so we have this new software in TC2 called Live Call Connect, and it's really easy to use. It'll take the giving meeting room, let's say Zoom or Teams or what have you, and convert up to nine callers into individual signals into our switcher. So now, instead of having to worry about some of the issues that we traditionally encounter when we're doing like a screen scrape or something like that, what we instead get in our production pipeline is a bunch of individuals that we can now work with as individual sources. That allows us to change the presentations we're making. And I think if we combine this concept with what we just talked about in NDI 5, you'll start to see that when you're working in an NDI ecosystem, working with a TriCaster is the best bet you can have. The Live Call Connect feature set is exclusive to the TC2, which is a 32 input 4K switcher. So the amount of NDI switches that you can push into this device is very large. Today, Live Call Connect works with a couple of uh, uh, virtual meeting platforms. Uh, we can work with uh, Teams, we can work with Zoom, Discord, Tencent, um, and, and, and that list is sort of not fixed. And the whole idea here is we made this easy. Nine callers, a mix minus, and talk back to that channel. So you don't have to do any sophisticated audio controls when you're working with Live Call Connect. But where this really, really ties together and, and sort of where I want to end up is here. When we're working with a TriCaster, we now have the ability to work with local sources, audio, web feeds, SRT, remote sources, remote guests. The, the variety of ways that we can grab content is so large with some of the things we talked about in NDI 5, things like Live Call Connect. There are a lot of ways to get somebody from anywhere, whether it be on their cell phone, on their laptop or otherwise, into your TriCaster's production pipeline. And then at that point, now you're leveraging the most, you know, this is the switcher that is built upon NDI because we at New Tech sort of created NDI and with Viz Group, you know, this is our baby. Uh, uh, but now we have the ability to stream this content, do remote delivery of this contract, distribute in our, our AV location. We can have comms and post-production pipelines. It really all comes together and ties together neatly when you're working with a TriCaster. And so I think if you are sort of been dabbling in NDI or using an NDI product already, uh, whether it be a switcher or a converter or what have you, software, I think it is a good time to be looking at what new tech is doing on the product side and potentially integrate that into your entire production. And last but not least, because we are doing all of this stuff with remote enablements, the TriCaster series all have a KVM feature. So it can be any event anywhere and you can interface with your TriCaster, you can bring in your remote guests, you don't even have to be on site with your system to leverage these, these, this sort of immense uh, workflow. Uh, that's sort of the end of my conversation. I think we have a couple of questions, Eric. Uh, I'll turn it over to you. Absolutely, Chris. Thanks for that rapid fire run through of all the features in NDI 5 and how they integrate uh, with the TriCaster. Uh, yeah, we have a number of questions. The first is from uh, our own streaming media producer, contributing editor, Anthony Barocas, asking, how would you compare and contrast NDI 5 over a wide area network with SRT, specifically things like ease of setup and debugging and signal reliability? Yeah, this is this is going to be a big question. And and certainly the the, the the current model for this stuff is using SRT, right? I think uh, the, the cool parts of SRT is you have that granular level of control where you do all kinds of setups and things like that. You have to get all the, the points right. Um, so it's, it's a little bit technically intensive to set up, but you get a really cool stream and really good video quality. The benefits of what we're doing in NDI 5, just like all other things NDI, is we try to make this stuff really easy. So I have some NDI sources in my facility. I open up the bridge tool, I host, and on the other side, I can just join in on the bridge. I don't have to get in on a per device level and configure my settings to get that interconnectivity. 
So I think your biggest feature that you're going to see when you're comparing those two is just how easy and buttery smooth it is to set up those remote connections. I think that's going to be a big reliance point as people move forward. We're designing this sort of to be globally scalable. And, and SRT is amazing. I think it has tons of uses. I really like it in the esports environments where you're getting like these ultra high K4, ultra high 4K signals going in. Um, but the idea behind NDI5 is to make this really easy for end users. Again, at, at the base level of what we're doing with NDI5, which is a local school, a church, open the application, grab some sources and share them. Sure. Is buttery smooth? Is that in your marketing materials? Buttery <laughs> smooth? Um, <laughs> uh, question, the next question is about um, Live Call Connect. Is that, sure. uh, Eric Fries is asking, is that just taking the Zoom gallery view and splitting it up? I noticed that one guy has meeting controls over him when you show them as a separate source. That, that, that's an old piece of material. Uh, <laughs> uh, contemporarily, what, it, what the, the, the inner workings of Live Call Connect, essentially, no, you will not see any screen overlay. Uh, you won't see the username. You'll just get the individual carve outs. We're giving you up to 720p quality with those individuals. So up to nine people at 720. Uh, there's a little bit of math behind that. But in short, the platforms themselves aren't giving us more than 720 quality uh, with up to nine callers. After nine callers, the, the you know, virtual media room platforms, and this is everybody, whether it be Zoom or Teams or what have you, Discord, they start to step on the video quality. So we're trying to give you the maximized effort. And in, in live production today, you won't see any controls. You won't see any usernames. Okay, great. Uh, we've got two questions about this. Uh, is there an audio talkback channel in NDI5 that can work for the remote camera and remote guest? The, so right now, the way remote's designed, and, and I think you may have noticed on some of the slides, there's beta because we released NDI5 like right away, people were really clamoring for it. Mm -hmm. um, today, that's a one-way communication with remote. You get the viewer into your pr production pipeline. Uh, the, the future could be more complex than that. Like we could pack those things. If we're talking about Live Call Connect, Live Call Connect gives you a talkback channel to the given meeting platform. So like right now we're in the Zoom room. If I was using Live Call Connect, I would talk back to all of the users. That's just because the Teams room or the Zoom room, would, what have you, has a muxed audio. So all of our audio audios are inter interconnected into one audio feed. So I can't individually send an audio feed because it just doesn't exist in the pipeline. Excellent, excellent. Um, and this this uh, question may speak to the fact that, like you said, you, you didn't say you rushed it out, but you said you wanted it to get out there as soon as possible because people were clamoring for it. Yeah. Uh, Shane Higgins says, we tried NDI5 a couple of weeks ago, only local mode was currently available. When will host and join be available? Uh, as soon as they can get it out and it, and it, and it works the way we want it to. I think what we do at New Tech and Biz Group in general is, especially with the NDI protocol, we really, really have this grand vision that everyone can use this stuff out of the box. And we really want this to be as easy as possible. There's lots of little dials and knobs once you get to working with Bridge that an advanced user, someone who's like more familiar with SRT, they can tweak that stuff and make it look good. But because New Tech always wants to work with people, like I said, in churches, in high schools and middle schools. We also want to make those ease of use buttons that just says, hey, click this if you want it to be low bandwidth or click this if you want it to look really good, really high quality. So it's just edging out those features and making sure this all works for the most sophisticated broadcaster all the way down to a kid in middle school. Excellent, excellent. We're going to wrap there. We have one more question, but it's, it's rather specific. And Shane Higgins, I will forward that question to Chris after we're done here. Uh, and I'm betting Chris will be able to answer you offline. So again, thanks so much to New Tech and thanks so much, Chris, for that presentation. Thanks, Eric. All right.